Texas. Bet you're wondering why I'm slithering out of the abyss of my barely lit apartment. There's a good reason for it. You also may be wondering why I look like Batman on Mardi Gras. There's also a great reason for that. In fact, it's the same reason. Your girl had grand plans for this look. I was gonna do this cute little video concept about makeup types that I just don't ever buy while doing a makeup playdate video in which I tried my hand at my first halo eye. And then I did this to my face and things weren't blending. What I'm gonna do instead is that exact same video while taking you through my night routine, basically, and it's a get unready with me. I'm stressed. Before I get into the actual unreadying, let me explain the video concept a little bit and what I mean by makeup I don't buy. I like having a group of products that I just feel no excitement for whatsoever and no urge to buy anymore because in this makeup climate of constant advertising and 25-8 sh -sh shilling it's great to just have things that when I see a post about the type of thing it is on Trend Mood or Hot Fire Makeup or some YouTubers talking about it, I'm like, that's great. I don't care. I'm never gonna buy it. That money's gonna be safe in my checking account. It's very comforting. The first step in my night routine is saying positive affirmations to myself in my bathroom mirror. I think the first step in everyone's beauty regimen should be making sure they're all set and all good with number one. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Stop crying. You think Beyonce wants you to cry? Stop being so anxious. I'm good at makeup and my self-esteem is not a ruse. I'm not lying to the internet. This is so dumb. The first makeup product that I don't buy is liquid foundations. The reason for that is extremely simple. The concerns I have about my skin are as follows. The pores on each side of my nose are pretty abrasive and pretty visible and my skin it's super shiny, despite the fact that it's not oily, which doesn't make any sense to me. My skin is so dry and crepey, and yet it's so shiny. My best estimation of why this happens is that my skin is so dry that it takes on a bit of a leather-like quality. You know how leather always has kind of a dull shimmer to it, a dull shine when it catches the light? That's my skin. But neither of those things are things that I need foundation to counteract. Introducing a liquid onto my face is just going to give me something else that I need to mattify. Unless I use a matte foundation, which isn't super recommended for people with dry skin like me. Sometimes I go into these fugue states where I think, oh, I need to have foundation on my routine so it's a full face and it's a full routine. And then I buy a foundation and I'm like, oh, wait, that's right. I hate using this. But actually, this brings me into the next type of product I don't buy, which is primers that aren't mattifying. It was a while that I was using a sample of the Too Faced Hangover RX primer, which was nice. It smelled pleasant and it made my skin feel comfortable and moisturized. But like after I used it, I still had to take extra steps to mattify because that was the primary concern of my complexion makeup. So it just seems like it's adding an extra step that I could just cover with moisturizer or oil. I kind of exclusively buy mattifying primers and I just, every time I hear about like, oh, this is a glow boosting primer or this is a moisturizing primer or an adhesive primer or whatever, I'm like, okay, you can keep that though. I always wash my face at the start of my night routine. This is the Ole Henriksen The Clean Truth Filming Cleanser. It's pretty solid at getting makeup off your face. While I'm massaging my face with this wonderful orange scented cleanser, I'll talk about the third type of product I don't buy, which is liquid highlighters and illuminators or cream like stick highlighters and illuminators. I just find that introducing a liquid or a cream is just harder to blend than just brushing on a thin layer of powder with a fan brush would be. And because mattifying is so important to me, nine times out of 10, once I get to highlighter, I've already put some kind of powder or powder finished product in my face. And as we all know, creams on top of powders. <sighs> is not the best pair. I can't open my eyes when I do this or I won't be able to see for the rest of the night. Now I look like myself again. I'm not a tropical bird on a bender. Ah, here she is, Miss Armenia. <laughs> really, I could have had this video end in about 20 seconds and be like, products I don't buy, everything that isn't mattifying because the next thing is dewy setting sprays. They just make me feel shiny and greasy and I don't like the look of them at all. I like to control where I look dewy and sparkly with highlighting and that's it. Setting sprays are just too unpredictable for me. Wet n Wild's Photo Focus Setting Spray doesn't advertise itself as a dewy setting spray to my knowledge, but it is super dewy. It's like your yard in the morning dewy. 
It's like decimal system, Dewey. I couldn't handle it, sister. It's just so not my thing. I, <laughs> I have to brush my teeth, so I'm gonna let editing me so I take over the next thing. I use a Quip toothbrush because I'm a sheep. <laughs> Baba says ow. Hey guys, it's Editing Nisa. Just letting you know that Filming Nisa is a liar who forgot she said I was going to explain something and went ahead and filmed a clip of herself explaining it later on. So uh, yeah, your fave is problematic, I guess. I'm gonna moisturize my lips next. I'm gonna use just straight up shea butter. And I'm gonna talk about a whole bunch of eye products that I just despise. I do not buy felt tip eyeliners. I hate them. I think they're a scourge. And I despise the fact that they are so popular because it takes deserved attention away from brush tip eyeliners, which are vastly superior. I'm gonna moisturize my face with some just straight up argan oil. Next up, liquid eyeshadows have just no place in my heart. I just find them to be a little bit difficult to use. They don't appeal to me. I'm gonna get my hair together next. I also cannot stand gel eyeliners. I don't know why they're so popular. I find gel eyeliners to be very difficult to use and more difficult to remove than eyeliners need to be. They don't, I feel, give an effect that a liquid eyeliner can't give. Maybe it's the long wear that people prefer a gel eyeliner for. I feel like that has to be it, right? The kind of ease of use versus wear time is not worth it for me to use gel eyeliners. Lastly, I don't buy subscription boxes and I do not plan to. It's not even necessarily because I don't think that they're worth it monetarily. I watch a lot of subscription box unboxings and I feel like I almost take this sort of like sense of schadenfreude in them where I'm like, oh, you spent money and you didn't love the bag. You wasted your money a little bit and I didn't. <laughs> Very silly and rude of me to do, but I know that there's a part of me that does that and I want to be honest. But more so than that, I think that it would just, oh, I got that all over my face, hi. I think that it would just result in way too much makeup and skincare and hair care entering my collection and a lot of it would remain unused. And I get anxious about just leaving stuff to go bad. It, you know what I can compare it to? You know Buzzfeed videos that are like weird things everybody does when they're alone? <laughs> and it's like, apologize to clothes you don't wear. It's like, that's me with my makeup that goes unused. I don't want makeup to be entering my collection at that rate coupled with the lack of control I have over it. That's my major thing about subscription boxes. I don't think that they're bad as a concept at all. I have a friend who wasn't really all that into makeup and didn't really know what she liked. And since she started buying subscription boxes, she has such a well-formed knowledge of what she enjoys and what she doesn't. And she's been able to have a lot of fun with it. And it's like kind of a completely untapped thing for her. And for me, it's kind of an I can do bad all by myself situation. I know what I like in makeup. This whole video is about things I don't like in makeup and I can only make this because I have a very intimate knowledge of what I do and don't like. And I just, I don't need a subscription box to show me new products. I follow like five Instagram accounts that do that exactly. I feel like it'd be so weird to end on something else after that like long-winded speech. It's like, <sighs> those are my deep and complicated thoughts on subscription boxes. Also, nail polish. Like, I, th I think it'd be weird to end on something else. <laughs> I feel like this kind of goes without saying. I don't want anybody watching this to, you know, feel like I'm being snotty about makeup. It's like, oh, I don't need to wear these things because I'm not a commoner. I don't need to wear foundation and I don't need to contour. Oh, contour kits. That's another thing I don't buy. I don't like contouring. I don't think it looks good on me. My face is so warm toned that anything even slightly cool on my face makes me look like a corpse. I, it's comforting to me to have things <laughs> This is gonna sound like weird and like I have no self-control, but it's comfortable for me to have things that I don't have to worry about feeling any internal pressure to buy. There are some things that when I see them on like trend mood or something, I'm like, oh no. I want it. A good example is the Natasha Denona palette that just came out. I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not even gonna think about buying it. Like I went through a thing with the Sunset palette where I was like, $129 not isn't, it's not that expensive. <laughs> I don't need groceries for two weeks. It's fine. Three weeks. Yeah, I don't eat that much. <laughs> really? But like, I don't. But this one, like, I think it's called the Tropical Palette. It's like, okay, no. Like, I know myself now. I know what I'm gonna use and what I'm gonna buy. It's not gonna be this. 
but I still felt something for it. I felt a tingle, you know? The goblin stirred ever so slightly, you feel me? But with things like foundations and whatnot and contour kits and brow products is another thing. Anything for the brow that isn't a clear gel, I just don't care about at all. I just, I feel nothing. I feel absolutely nothing. And it's nice. It's very easy to feel like you need everything. And I think it always helps to be reminded like, okay, but like for you specifically, does it even make sense to own this or buy this? And if the answer is not like resoundingly like, uh, yeah, sis, why wouldn't it? Then like, you gotta pass, you know? You gotta pass. I have run out of things to say. I wanted to be done, but I'm not going to be. So I'm just gonna step it out. Before you leave, I am gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day, that would be just super fulfilling on a deeper spiritual level. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Oh my God, she's so serious in this one. She hasn't done a bit in like at least.